Hi everyone, before we left for spring break, we had completed um, the chi-square goodness of fit problems, looking to see if a distribution's um, observed values fit what is expected. So let's take a look at one practice problem. If you think you remember this pretty well, I would say go ahead, hit pause on the video, try the problem out on your own first, and then we can... Um, and then you can look through, unpause the video and look through to see how you did. So the first thing is to get an idea of what's going on here. We have an uh, American roulette wheel that contains 18 red, 18 black, and two green numbers. Uh, the following table shows the frequency with which the ball landed in each color in these 200 trials. So if a, and then the question is being asked at the 5% significance level, do the data suggest that the wheel is out of balance? So if the wheel is in balance, let's let's do the opposite of that for a second. That means that each um, part of the wheel has an equal chance of being landed on. OK, um, we're checking to see if it's out of balance. So for this particular problem, when I set up my null and alternative hypothesis, I want you to think back to something I've been saying in class all along. And it's this idea that when the question is asked here, it is basically asking about the alternative hypothesis. So if you think of it that way, the data suggests that the wheel is out of balance, your alternative hypothesis is we are checking to see that the wheel is out of balance. Um, when we talked about goodness of fit, what this means, if it's out of balance, then the distribution of these observed values will not fit what we expect to happen. So, of course, the null hypothesis, we go into this problem with the understanding, with the assumption that this wheel is balanced. So our null could be the wheel is balanced. And what does that mean? If the wheel is balanced, then our observed values that we have here in the problem should fit what we expect to get. Um, we are trying to determine if there's enough evidence in this sample to say, um, if there's enough evidence here in, within this sample that these numbers are not near our expected values, then we can go ahead and say the wheel is out of balance. So let's let's start by trying to figure out what these expected and observed values are. Um, so for this particular problem, just to get some ideas down, we are going to run it at the 5% significance level. Um, there were 200 trials, n is 200, so we'll leave that information up there. Now, one second. When we do any of these goodness of fit, it's always good to start kind of a table. And what we're going to look at are the three different colors. We have red, black, and green. And we need to know what is the distribution. This is kind of also like saying, what's the probability it's going to land on red? What's the chance it's going to land on black? What's probably it's going to land on green? Um, so our wheel has 18 red, right? 18 black and two green. So if you add those up together, 18, 18, 36, 37, you have 38 possibilities on a roulette wheel. All right. 18 of those are red. So if you think of it as 18 out of 36, you have a 0.474 chance that it's going to land on red. Also, 18 out of 36, you have 0.474 chance it's going to land on black. 
And if you do two, sorry, that's not 36, I know that. It's 38. Apologize. And two out of 38. Point oh five three, okay. So that's what our probability of um, landing on the various colors are. Our observed values are what are given in the problem itself. We know out of our two hundred trials, eighty eight were red, one hundred and two black and 10 green. The expected values are kind of what you have to figure out. And to do that, you need to use these probabilities and the fact that there were 200 trials. So out of 200, if 0.474, the probability of landing on red is 0.474, we can take 200 times 0.474 and get 94.8. That means of the 200, 94.8 should be black, uh, should be red, sorry, but black's going to be the exact same thing because you also have a 0.474 chance of landing on black, so that's also 94.8. And then you have a only 0.053 chance of landing on green. So 0.053 times 200 is going to give me 10.6. So if we put a ball on a roulette wheel 200 times, we expect about 94.8 to be red, 94.8 to be green, and 10.6. I mean 94.8 to be black and 10.6 to be green. Now, if you take a look at your chi-square formula sheet for a goodness of fit test, here's your formula. Chi-square is a summation O minus E squared over E. Let's go back to our practice problem. So what we need is that observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Um, this will give you your subtotals for each of the colors. So your observed, be careful you're picking the right numbers. So your observed is 88 minus 94.8. So that's going to give us 88 minus 94.8. Please make sure you square that first before dividing by the expected value of 94.8. And if you work all that out, you will get 0 0.488. Okay, do that for the next problem. So now our observed is 102 minus again the 94.8 because the expectation was the same for black. Divide it by 94.8. And this time you should get 0 0.5. Five four seven, and for green you have ten minus ten point six squared divided by ten point six. It's going to give you point oh three four. Move this up a little bit. Your chi square value is now the summation of those subtotals. And that summation is going to give me 1.069. Now, for those of you who worked this problem out, and instead of um, where the distribution is 0.474, I rounded this to three decimal places. If you didn't round that number, you kept it in your calculator, which is a good thing because it's going to give you a more accurate answer. Um, and then you kept using it throughout, you could have actually gotten a chi-square of possibly 
too. And that's fine. You are, you are certainly within um, the numbers. When I create these tests, I'm going to use Canvas because it gives me more flexibility and how I can uh, allow you to round. Plus, you're going to, this is also why it's super important for every test that we are going to have on Canvas, you're going to turn your work in because then I can look at it and see what you did and see if it's just a rounding error. Um, so to continue this problem, we now know we have our chi-square test statistic equals one point. I'm going to use the six nine. It's not going to really make a difference. So moving on to part three, we have to make a determination to reject or not reject. To do that, I'm going to use a p-value approach. So I'm going to draw my table. I'm going to draw my chart. Right, there's a simple chi-squares. Remember, they're right skewed, starting at zero. And 1.069 is going to be fairly over here. Remember, when we do the p-value approach, uh, we put our test statistic on the chart. And this area here represents our p-value. So before we go on, though, as you know, with a chi-square is kind of like with a t-table, you need degrees of freedom. Go to your formula sheet if you don't remember degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is equal to c minus 1, where c is the number of possible values for the variable under consideration. Remember what I told you in class? Think of c as categories. So when I go back to the practice problem, um, we only have one one, two, three categories. So our degrees of freedom is three minus one. All right. So we're going to look up 1.069 on the chi-square table at two degrees of freedom. So you go to your chi-square table. Which you should have. Oops, sorry about that you should have in front of you. Everybody see it? Look at two degrees of freedom. And of course, the lowest number is four. 1.069 is clearly in this direction on the table. So when you look at the areas notice when we move to the left the areas are increasing they're getting bigger so a test statistic of 1.069 is going to have an area that is greater than 0.10 so go back to our practice problem and we can conclude that p is greater than 0.10 we know alpha let me scroll up for a minute, was 0 0.05. Therefore, clearly, if P is greater than 0 0.10 and alpha is 0 0.05, we know that P is greater than alpha. And we can only reject for small P's, meaning smaller than alpha, we cannot reject. So this is a do not. reject. And number four, in conclusion, remember, when we are writing our conclusion, we are restating that question that was being asked, right? At the 5% significance level, do the data suggest the wheel is out of balance? For number four, we would simply state at the 5% significance level the data do not provide the data do not provide evidence sufficient evidence sorry for my sloppiness I'm about to run out of my 15 minute time limit evidence that the wheel is out of 